uh, very good morning to all the participants uh, on behalf of murugappa pallen uh, we invite you all for this 6 uh, days aicti iest sponsored program on pedagogical techniques and tools for technical education during this new normal so now i request our principal in charge sir professor suresh sir to welcome the participants and guests welcome sir good morning sir uh, it's a great privilege to welcome uh, colonel b venkat director faculty development cell aacte dr ramesh sundar sharma associate professor school of global affairs dr b r ambedkar university delhi officials from aacte officials from iste officials from iste tamil nadu section all expert speakers participants from central U institutes universities engineering colleges polytechnic colleges and other educational institutions heads of departments and department in charges from our institution and the participants from our institution uh, good morning to you all this faculty development program on pedagogical techniques and tools for technical education in the new normal is a 6 days aict iste sponsored program and uh, the coordinator for the program is dr k s shekar and uh, we have received a tremendous response for this program about we received about 300 uh, applications and out of which we have shortlisted 100 participants for the program i think this program is very relevant since it is focusing on Uh, the latest techniques on online tools like uh, uh, blended learning flipped classroom uh, methodologies evaluation techniques etc etc because online learning has become an uh, important ingredient of current teaching learning processes so i once uh, once again welcome you all for this 6 uh, days fdp program and i very i am very sure that this program will help you and in going a long way in uh, in online learning methods thank you very much thank you very much sir thank you very much for uh, the welcome address uh, now i will just brief about the program so we are all very much aware that the impact of covid 19 pandemic made all the education sector to revise its thinking and impose new ways and methods in carrying out our regular academic activities like uh, the what other sectors are doing um, the teaching learning process must adapt to the digital age challenges in which the ict tools are very much important and dominant for the teaching learning process and we all aware that due to the pandemic the abrupt shift from online and the distance learning is directly challenged the knowledge mindset and skills of all our faculties so in the previous days there are some skills which are considered as nice to have skills now it becomes must have skills that means everyone should know the online teaching methods tools and those things so previously it was nice to have skills now it becomes must have skills so now the situation needs our education system to face the task of preparing our faculties for teaching and learning in the coming days with that view we we submitted the proposal to the aict and iest for organizing this program so and we have got selected this is a very much important in this scenario so uh, as education institutions are uh, grappled with the challenges and changes it is clear that the pandemic has improved or increased or amplified the need for an education system and there is a change need for change in digital technologies to embrace the present scenario due to the new normal we are all familiar with the technologies for the over the two years and we slowly we came into the offline teaching mode and now we are the next variant came and we are again uh, planning to go for the online methods so even though all of our faculty are uh, familiar in their uh, online teaching tools and they may be familiar in some particular area only so this I idea of this program is to familiarize with the popular and many tools and techniques 
to the teachers in the ICT area. So this program will throw a light on the pedagogical changes and the ICT tools to be used in the present situation. And the teachers can practice them to incorporate in the regular teaching activities. So this course definitely will help the faculty to improve student engagement in their class and use of ICT tools led in the course will help teacher to save a lot of time which can be used for working with students. So this is the uh, objective of this program and with this objective we have organized the program. We, we have invited a lot of uh, experts, those who are uh, handling the tools and techniques for a very long period and they are much experienced. So I request all the participants to make utilize uh, this um, program for their career benefit. So with this we, uh, we will go to the inaugural session of today's. Uh, for inauguration, we have a great personality who is at the AACT as a faculty uh, development cell as director, who is none other than Colonel Venget sir. So Colonel Venget sir is a serving officer from a technical branch in the army and here in the electronics and the mechanical engineering division of the army. So sir completed his mechanical engineering from army institute and he has more than uh, 13 years of service in uh, all possible areas in the command, staffing and instruction across the country and abroad. And uh, SAR has the unique distinction of representing India to the Russia as a, a military attachment program through India-Russia collaboration in the defense area. SAR currently serving as the director of AACT in the faculty development cell and he is looking after all the faculty development related issues and SAR is in charge for releasing the grants under the AACT's quality improvement scheme that is AQIS. So in addition to that SAR is very much involved in many quality initiatives of the AACT. To name few, he is looking after the national initiative for technical teachers training that is NIPTT and SAR is also the looking of also looking after the examination reforms. He is organizing series of work, workshops throughout the country for the benefit of the teachers and for the improvement of examination reforms in the country. And SAR is also looking after the student learning assessment project that is SLAP. And SAR is the main driving force behind the newly implemented 360 degree feedback system which is as a teachers, you are very much relevant or related to the 360 degree feedback system. So SAR is looking after the 360 degree feedback system and he is also looking after the technical book writing scheme under regional languages and he is also steering committee member of National Education Policy 2020. So in addition to that, he is uh, involved in a lot of uh, quality initiatives of AACT. So it is, uh, he is a right person to inaugurate this wonderful program on behalf of the uh, Murugappa Polytechnic College and on behalf of the Department of Mechanical Engineering and uh, on behalf of all the participants, I'm having great pleasure in welcome Colonel Venkat sir. Sir, please sir, you can join sir in now the second issue. Thank you sir. Thank you sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thanks a lot and absolutely pleasure to be coming on your uh online platform and be then speaking. Let me assure you, first of all, that a great activity that your people have done, wherein a Murugappa Polytechnic uh, College has come out with this particular activity of uh, going ahead with one week long uh, training program, basically meant for pedagogical techniques and tools for technical education, and more so in the current times. That is what is the theme all about. And it's an apps and a very relevant topic. I was listening to the speaker and why not each one of us have seen the changes around us. Each one of us have understood how the things have shaped around us uh, in the last year, year and a half, now nearly touching two years, wherein the complete education more so, which was earlier to be done in a classroom concept has all of a sudden shifted to an online virtual mode. All of a sudden overnight, multiple ways and means to impart education evolved. However, as the time has gone by, now we have reached some level of stability 
and after reaching that level of stability it's only to the compliments on each and every teacher each and every faculty member who in spite of the situational changes and in spite of the diversities which took place around leading to you know uh, the situation being termed as pandemic still continue to provide education that is what is something which is so commendable so in case if all the faculty members and teachers have this kind of enthusiasm in them i don't think so then we have any issues as far as whether the situation is in the way it is today you are this particular aspect of informing the complete gathering and of the faculty members on the new pedagogical techniques and tools in the current scenario is an apt and a very very relevant relevant subject there are multiple ways multiple means in which it can be done and i hope over the period of next 6 days when you people are connected with various resource people who would be speaking on this subject quite obviously at the end of 6 days the faculty member would be finding themselves that much more competent that much more back to their work and quite obviously under your dynamic leader keep do keep it up do a good job done and uh, very uh, impressed to listen that the number of participants for this kind of an activity crossed around 300 so that is the reach that this particular topic of your said that is what each one of us should be now taking and understand to combine together is the mainstay for any activity a complete credit for this to make sure that you have a program which is so successful right on day 1 that is what the credit goes to the institute all the management all the staff people who are connected in front uh, my due regards and compliments to you all those people who are not there is a background making sure that the program remains a success extremely good job and very well done looking forward for this program to go ahead uh, and uh, quite obviously in collaboration with IST and uh, any program which AICT does in collaboration with IST understandably the result is something which we are seeing today so are getting together are getting on board together and each one of us interacting is purely because of a joint and a mutual understanding between the each and every participant each and every organizing body and most importantly your institute so well done uh, shekhar sir compliments to you keep doing the good job uh, let us continue to remain in touch aict looks forward to larger uh, cooperation and collaboration with your institute and best wishes to all the participants take care of yourself we are heading into new years wishing you each one of you all the best for the new years once again best wishes and jai hind thank you very much sir thank you very much sir thank you very much for your good words and uh, motivation to us definitely uh, we will uh, look for uh, all the possible collaboration with ac and isk for the benefit of the faculty thank you very much sir in short notice you have accepted our invitation to do the join here and for that we are thankful to you sir thank you very much sir thank you very much sir. grateful grateful thank you thank you sir and dear participants now uh, we will move on to the next agenda of today's session we will be having the keynote address uh, by professor uh, dr ramesh chandra sharma so i am having pr pressure in uh, introducing professor ramesh chandra sharma uh, professor professor ramesh chandra sharma is a faculty for instructional design and a chairperson of the committee to facilitate the adoption of moocs for swayam at ambedkar university delhi uh, previously he taught uh, education technology and learning resources at wawasan uh, open university malaysia and he is an expert in open and distance technology mediated learning and he was served as visiting professor at university in brazil and he was also served as a visiting professor at university of fiji and fiji of fiji and he is a commonwealth of learning as director of the commonwealth education media center for asia at new delhi 
sir is a regional director of indira gandhi national open university india and sir is also the director of distance education at the university of guyana guyana south america and he has been a member of the advisory group of hrd for the united nation conference on trade and development uh, while at the university of guyana he also collaborated with undp for its enhanced public trust security and inclusion project volunteer service overseas and united nation volunteer to develop suitable educational opportunities for communities and youth and sir is the editor of asian journal of distance education which is launched in 2003 and has been associated with several other peer reviewed journals including scopus index and ssca index journals as a reviewer editor and editorial advisory board member in the field of open and distance learning sir is an author and an editor of several books and research papers on education technology educational multimedia and e learning dr sharma is a practitioner promoting open education resources he has been a trainer and a capacity builder in the field of education technology and has supervised doctoral research in the field many completed the doctoral program under sars guidance he has conducted workshop and evaluation activities for igno semsca cyl uncat and aga gan foundation among others so is a very resourceful knowledgeful person in this area of education technology on behalf of the murugappa polytechnic college and department of mechanical engineering and on behalf of all the participants i am having great pleasure in welcoming professor ramesh chandra sharma so uh, at the outset i must thank him in a very short notice of time he accepted our invitation to present the keynote address to the participant on the theme of the conference we must thank for professor uh, dr ramesh chandra sharma welcome you sir now the session is yours sir uh, i request you to deliver the keynote address on the theme of the subject welcome sir okay thank you dr shekhar and good morning everyone and my namaste to kanal venkat also i am sure that uh, he is still present with us it was so wonderful and beautiful to listen to him uh, and uh, his assurance that uh, uh, aict and uh, uh, other organizations uh, in fact uh, if you see uh, these national bodies uh, who are the apex uh, institutions uh, to maintain quality of uh, not only uh, technical education but general education in india uh, they are doing really wonderful work and we must feel proud about uh, the developments uh, in education uh, which we have achieved in our country uh, due to the uh, uh, you know good guidance by these institutions like aicte or medical council of india or bar council of india uh, the uh, uh, national council for teacher education all these bodies they have been established with a specific purpose to maintain high standards and that's why our institutions uh, they are so prominent and i'm happy to be associated uh, today with the murugappa polytechnic college and i wish all of you the very best and as uh, uh, colonel has wished all of you a very uh, great uh, uh, new year coming up uh, just after two days so my i also join him in welcoming uh, uh, all of you to the uh, new era now and uh, let us hope that uh, the coming times will be better because for the past two years we have been seeing that there are so many hurdles coming up uh, in way but the human zeal and our enthusiasm Uh, it is not diminishing so let us pray that uh, we continue on the path of development and with this uh, uh, few words let me uh, share my screen so that we can start discussing our presentation today just uh, checker ji can you confirm that uh, you are seeing the screen in full mode Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, very good. So, but friends, sir, I'm able to see the screen. Thank you, so much. Okay, sir, it's visible, sir. No issue, sir. Okay, thank you so much. Yes, sir, it is visible. So, uh, friends, uh, as you all have seen that for the past two years we are suffering from the pandemic, and not only that pandemic, but in on otherwise, what we say that 
we live in a VUCA world. So now question for you, what is VUCA? What do we, which, uh, what do we call it as a VUCA world in which we are living? It is not only one-sided lecture. I want you to... So all are sided. Okay. Uncertainty. Yes. yes. Yeah, you are you are right. Continue. Complex and ambiguous. Yes, wonderful. I can't see your names because uh, when I'm in full screen mode, uh, I can't see the participants' names. But I think Dr. Shaker will give you a surprise prize for the right answer. So you can contact him after this session and demand your prize from him for the correct answer you have provided. We live in a, we, we call it as we live in a VUCA world, which is volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. Why volatile? Because uh, you must have seen that the temper flares at any uh, moment, and things are quite fluid. Uh, we, uh, we live in a world of uncertainty. You would never know what will happen. Nobody imagined that Corona will affect us. Nobody imagined that. In fact, this is very surprising. Let me tell you an interesting thing. Uh, most of you, uh, you have, uh, uh, you know, joined us uh, by appearing through some interview, right? Or many of you might have conducted interviews of uh, uh, some means maybe in your capacity as the job giver, as an employer that way. And you must have seen that sometimes the people, and particularly the interview uh, taking people, they have a fancy for asking a question. What is the most common question uh, means one of the most uh, common question which the people ask during the interviews for job? Give an idea. What is one of the most common questions which the people ask? Just imagine, think or explain it from your own experience. Okay, come forward, who will tell? Otherwise, you will ask Shekharji to tell, to ask uh, us that what question he asks during the interviews. It looks like you all have been appointed without any interview, <laughs> direct appointment, no interview. Only offer goes to you requesting you that, okay, Dr. Minakshi, we want you to join our institution. Would you be kind enough to join us? <laughs> like, it looks like that. One of the questions which the people ask is, where do you see yourself after five years from now or 10 years from now? Isn't it? Yes, sir. Yes. So, so now think of it that if, if somebody asked this question in 2015, so the, 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 uh, <laughs> yes, Dr. Nar, Nasir, that's also one of them. But I find this question very interesting that where do you see yourself after five years from now or 10 years from now? People ask it. And I, it made me uh, uh, think that if somebody asked this question and if somebody replied uh, uh, to this question, in 2015, both were wrong because both never imagined that after five years, they will be sitting at home. Their answers must have been, oh, I want to see myself in your chair or I want to do that. I want to do this, <laughs> but nothing happened in 2020 because due to lockdown, everybody was at home. So uncertainty, you, you never know what is going to uh, happen uh, 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 on that. So this is uh, uh, called as complex. Things are quite complex. So you never know the kind of social relations, political relations. There are so many things and it brings ambiguity uh, into that. Now, this is a very interesting and particularly you all must be very familiar with it. The uh, age of fourth industrial revolution as uh, popularized by the um, president of uh, World Economic Forum, Professor Swaz Kulab. 
uh, indicating that we are now uh, crossing this fourth industrial um, revolution stage uh, wherein we believe that the first was when the steam powered engines uh, uh, we started using them after that when electricity came we shifted to assembly line mass production and then when the computerization was introduced uh, things changed and current situation is where where we have a kind of uh, uh, the uh, applications of uh, ai artificial intelligence dominated applications uh, uh, into that in addition to this kind of fourth uh, uh, industrial revolution uh, we are it is believed that we are also passing through this fourth education revolution uh, he this book is and this concept is popularized by sir anthony sheldon you see him in the photograph and he has written a book in fact he very recently just since the pandemic started in 2020 he brought the improved version of his book the fourth education revolution in which he proposes that nothing matters more than education if we are to see artificial intelligence liberate and not infantilize the humanity uh, so the uh, the uh, dominance of education how it is going to be uh, you know in the changing field so what needs to be done is that for if we want the uh, improvements in education and how the uh, digital medium can bring out those innovations we need to take care of the pedagogical practices the digital resources which are at a lower level where the uh, teachers the students and the administrators they uh, uh, manage these things because these are directly dealt by the teachers and the, the students in their teaching learning process based on the overall vision of the institution that becomes very important this is a graph by IEEE in which they have projected that how the things they are being done and the developments are happening in whatever area so you know already we already have in India I think around 20 cities they were uh, uh, announced to be developed as smart city so we already have smart grids, uh, the connected cars you already have seen and the successful uh, uh, trials have been conducted with the driverless cars in, in the countries. Then we have the uh, uh, various uh, uh, other autonomous uh, vehicles. Then uh, circular money is there, uh, the applications of artificial intelligence. And the work is going on now it is about the this uh, um, HCI called as the human computer integration or interface uh, and those things they are already there the work is going on how we can extend the life the radical life extension living beyond 100 years and both that and it is believed that the kind of unless this pandemic finishes us all I mean, it has created a great uh, loss of human life. But otherwise, the med the progress in the medical side it is uh, phenomenal, and the works are also going on that there may be a, a once a means a time very soon when, due to the research in genetics, those areas, neurosciences, etc., it will be a very very big thing to happen uh, in our uh, lifetime. Oh, there are certain developments which are happening and which is very important for uh, 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 not only uh, general education as well as the technical education is that how do we uh, analyze that how do we process the data now what is data data it is, it is a, a simple uh, you know merely representation of something for example if i say four or say if i say ten it is data it doesn't make any sense it is a simple thing but if I say that 10 kilometers, immediately you will make some sense out of that. So that becomes information. From information, it leads to knowledge creation. When we have some knowledge that, okay, if, uh, if, the, if the distance between, say, uh, New Delhi and Chennai is uh, 1,000 kilometers, so how do we plan our travel? That, that, that goes as the knowledge. From the knowledge, we develop insights, and the extreme thing is the development of wisdom to achieve the, that wisdom to take a right kind of decision from there. So, data is not the same as knowledge. If you say that there is a red and round object, it is a data. You see the figure here, it is red, it is round, so you, you know this is data. But when you, you know that this round and uh, red object is tomato, 
that is information but when you know that tomato is a fruit so it is uh, knowledge and the wisdom says that don't ever put tomato in a fruit salad you don't, you don't add it there you know, you, you, with that and this has allowed us to this is gartner cycle on uh, value versus difficulty on how the information is optimized from what happened which is the similar kind of descriptive analysis we go to diagnostic analysis when we try to analyze that why did it happen for example everybody is thinking that uh, first of all we were in this stage of what happened because nobody knew that why the people are feeling sick immediately so then we came to know that oh okay uh, it was corona the virus the uh, novel corona virus covid 19 was declared and then but then the second stage was why did it happen so people started saying that oh it really it was released from wuhan lab in china this happened that happened so that goes into the diagnostic application from that then we go to the prediction of that that if this is happening then what will happen and then the next is the prescriptive analysis that if this is going to happen what can we do as a as a matter of foresight into it and for all of you because i presume that uh, almost all of you who are and i'm very happy to note that when uh, the chairman uh, informed that out of 300 you are the lucky 100 people who have been selected for this uh, six days workshop so uh, to 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 in technical education the the development of this foresight is very very much uh, 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 crucial to that and how does these things they have brought changes to our system you see this was then the stage and in a way you can say it as information you can say it as a data you go to any office uh, means sir, sir, even now in some of the offices this is the situation there a lot of piles and piles of files lying here there etc but now the situation this is the current situation the technology has brought out these changes from us let's just see if you if i show you this uh, this graph and i ask you to make an analysis of that so how much time will you take this is from sahi uh, that uh, all india survey on higher education that is the report of there it shows you the number of universities so then you have to see that okay uh, 2011, 642, then 667, then 723, and now in 2015-16, we have 799 universities, and you keep on. But instead of this, if I show you this, immediately you can make a, a, a quick comparison that, okay, how things are progressing. So just see that earlier, when there were no technology with us, we used to handle these things in this way, and now we are empowered due to technology by handling these things there are various developments happening around us like uh, blockchain technology many of you may be aware about Ming Tang. it is one of the things which is fast catching up in fact many of the uh, uh, the you know dominant personalities popular personalities they are already shifting to nft so Amitabh Bachchan started, he was saying that the first uh, Bollywood personality to start his own NFT and then uh, Salman Khan news came that he also started his and then very recently the Sunil Gavaskar uh, is believed the, the, the one of the most uh, uh, popular, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the name, I think the people used to call him as Little Master and a very popular uh, our indian sports personality he also has uh, uh, started his own uh, you know selling his collections uh, as nft on there so these things the government uh, is now discussing at present it has not been uh, you know the cryptocurrency is not yet approved but then the things the talks the policies they have been put into place how we can take benefit of this blockchain technology into it and it is believed means this was the uh, uh, the 2019 report of nascom where 50 percent of the states in india they are involved in blockchain related initiatives and you can see that uh, cyber security healthcare land registry public service delivery ip protection power sharing uh, 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 funds uh, organ transplants uh, uh, the electronic health records uh, digital birth certificates, data management, e-governance, uh, fertilizer subsidy management, so many of the things 
they are being benefited by these uh, technological revolutions. The another kind of things in which the work is progressing very well are new developments in our area, like augmented reality. Augmented reality is a wonderful thing uh, which is happening. There are certain, this is an overly app which you can install on your machines and can work about it. Uh, then uh, I'll show you an example uh, on it. And uh, uh, this is location-based technology. Which are coming. These are means you have your mobile phone, whether it is uh, uh, iPhone or Android based, the company knows you at any given point of time where on earth you are due to the GPS tracker into it. And that is quite accurate up to three meters of distance. It can identify the location of a particular thing. Let us see one example of the uh, location based services. Business is always on the move, and in this fast-paced world, we need to get to where we're going fast and easy. Introducing location-based services from Alcatel Lucent Enterprise. It's like GPS, but indoors. No more getting lost, no more wasting time, offering huge benefits in your daily life. For you business operators, that means offering an improved and personalized customer experience that differentiates you from the competition by delivering customized services and increased profitability. For you end users, that means an improved quality of life, helping you get to where you need to go more efficiently, saving you time with less stress and confusion. All of this in the palm of your hand. LBS improves customer experience with wayfinding, so you can make it to your gate on time. Navigate through a maze of hallways to find your hotel room. Receive updates and directions to classroom changes at the university. Find your friend you are visiting at the hospital. LBS increases engagement with geo notifications. Businesses can improve traffic and revenue. So you can, you see that uh, how these things they are uh, assisting us. Another kind of application is the virtual reality applications. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much. Uh, so me and uh, in fact, uh, uh, I think I must thank uh, Sekhar Ji, one of our good friend, Dr. Yashpal Sharma. In fact, he was to address uh, all of you uh, today, but he got engaged because uh, he is uh, a, uh, managing a very big consultancy now for the government of India. So uh, unfortunately, could not join. But we both are working on the AR and VR applications. And uh, this is our uh, uh, study, which was published in IEEE publication last year on how we can design virtual reality applications in education. And uh, let us show our new, he is uh, Dr. Yashpal Sharma. Maybe in future you meet him. Let us see that Why what we are doing. To everyone. Today, we are going to discuss very unique technologies that we call the immersive technologies. You must heard about the augmented reality, virtual reality and even the mixed reality. What, what these realities are? Say for example, I am taking some example from the education point of view. Say for example, you are going to teach about a tiger, a simple example, a tiger. What are the different scenarios? Most probably you have a blackboard and you are drawing something like tiger, the image of the tiger that you are drawing on the blackboard. There may be possibility that you have an image of the tiger which is a 2D or maybe you can bring your children to your learners. Uh, uh, Dr. Shekhar, uh, can you confirm that you are receiving the audio? Yes sir, yes sir. It's okay. audible sir. Thank you. To the jungle, safari or something like that which is not possible for every teachers. What happens or what imagine 
just imagine if the live tiger come in front of you right in your class okay so this is the augmented reality the simple example if you have a mobile phone just keep it out just type tiger in any browser just type tiger in any browser just scroll down it you will find the image of the tiger and a small thing is written on it this is view tiger in 3d just click on it now you have the option to bring the tiger right in front of your eyes and not just the tiger in front of your eyes you will also listen to the roar of the tiger so say for example i'm doing this now see the tiger is live in front of me so how how you know uh, the technology that we use to bring the tiger in your classroom is augmented reality so in simple layman term you want to teach something and that concept is being augmented by using some 3d simulations and bring in your own environment you are able to see the things around you and you are also see that tiger is a part of it so this is what we call the augmented reality in next session we will discuss about the virtual so, so this is Namaskar how uh, the virtual uh, uh, reality works this is uh, another example of virtual worlds how do we uh, uh, use them and uh, so means uh, the, uh, the we can say that uh, we live in three kind of worlds the real world the digital world uh, which is the called as the web world and the 3d world uh, the virtual world uh, in which and particularly this has been uh, come to a uh, for light now uh, since uh, mark zuckerberg the ceo of uh, facebook they said that okay we are going uh, shifting to metaverse and they have changed the name of their company as meta now which is the parent company for uh, uh, facebook whatsapp and uh, instagram uh, like that we also have been using it for a very long time like this is chilbo headquarters in second life where uh, we uh, regularly conduct our conferences meet this is me sitting on the chair in this uh, second life is one of the very popular one of the first uh, most dominant uh, uh, second life uh, this uh, a virtual world application which was very very uh, popular into it they have very good means varied uses into the education like you can create simulations you can create games into it you can promote social learning and how the educational practices they are being conducted we have this virtual world asia our group in which uh, uh, this is me as my avatar is uh, uh, blackened out uh, from here and we have uh, people in our group from america from indonesia uh, from uh, uh, Japan, uh, like that. Uh, we, uh, this is virtual worlds education where we create those things. Not only that, now the recent developments are happening that even the blockchain based digital games, they are on the rise. And uh, the applications of blockchain, they are being invest, uh, explored, being uh, developed in many, many areas uh, uh, from there. Let us see some of the quick uh, examples of uh, virtual worlds. Like this is Second Life. The, it's the uh, screenshot. This is Active Worlds. Uh, this is uh, Online Worlds. In short, they call it as uh, Onwards, and which is the place where the multiple uh, players uh, uh, on uh, online role-playing games they, they they play those kind of. We call as as, as massive multiple player it means. Anyone, those who have the connection with the internet and can have access to that, they can play uh, from there. So this is the Natural History Museum in Vienna, which is in a, in Second Life, the uh, virtual world they have created. And this is the uh, um, my team, uh, which we started uh, creating a kind of a virtual museum. This theater was in Brazil, which got burnt down somewhere around, uh, it was started building in 1806 and uh, inaugurated but later on uh, it got uh, burned down in a big fire so physically this doesn't exist anymore but here you see 
the upper photo is the original photograph and through uh, our, uh, this uh, uh, technology we created a virtual uh, uh, version of that in which with the help of markers and arrowheads you can move around you can see what, what kind of performance is uh, uh, going there this software was developed in unity and uh, it is available on the internet similarly the people the students they study uh, radioactive dating or a teacher can teleport themselves to any place which is available there uh, uh, like that and this is the uh, my friend uh, hajime nishimura who is in japan he has created this uh, 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 simulations and observatory on second life where the study of coastal areas or uh, the the if effect of climatic change on polar bears etc they are uh, you know examined like that so those people you cannot go to uh, say north pole or south pole but with these kind of technologies we can create those kind of environments in which we can inform the, our students that what is the impact of that it it looks just like that uh, that they are in that region in that area and ex feel the experience in a similar way uh, this is an example of uh, verbella another uh, virtual world uh, uh, which is uh, uh, like uh, uh, the this is an example of second life now most of the companies what recent developments are happening that is shifting to cloud and uh, you may be knowing that the cloud technologies they are quite uh, secure safe and comparatively less costly as compared to your own installed versions of the things where you have to take care of many many things including maintenance its updation its security etc like that then uh, very recently i think if i see the newspaper there is an interesting news in, uh, news in the uh, uh, newspaper of today uh, what has happened that I think that was with the Amazon's Alexa. It happened. Perhaps uh, I think it is in the in the in, uh, newspaper. It is in Times of India because in Delhi we take Times of India. Mm -hmm. There is a very interesting news. There is this family, mm -hmm. and they wanted a physical challenge. You know the people they are funny. Those who have a lot of money, and, and those who don't, <laughs> those <laughs> who don't have to worry about their food. <laughs> they look after for those adventurous uh, activities so here is this family and they wanted some outdoor or physical kind of challenge so they asked alexa that give us a challenge and now the alexa what the alexa told them that take your phone charger insert it into the wall uh, 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 plug outlet halfway don't insert it full into the wall and then take a coin and try to touch the pins of the plug and you see they were shocked because it can create hazard it can create fire it can electrocute the uh, person who is doing that and they reported the matter and it went viral and the amazon company then they updated their software for the alexa devices that <laughs> and but alexa was Alexa, when the gate, she told that I found it on the internet. You know, so so, so things the, the 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 kind of things they are happening in that. But this uh, uh, smartphone speakers, the smart speakers or the voice assistant, they are very much helpful for our uh, for teachers for the students to obtain knowledge and in many things. And this has been powered with the applications of artificial intelligence or machine learning, because nowadays we have a better hardware configuration. In many of the places now, even the 5G connectivity, it has assisted in going online in better way and the rise of mobile applications. So nowadays, you can find mobile application for anything and everything. New things, new applications, new areas are being explored every day. But the beginning was that he is the fantastic person, uh, Alan Turing, with them when they during the World War uh, uh, Second. Uh, they were trying to decode this mach German machine, which was in a way popular as the beast because it was so complex that uh, uh, I means nobody could break it. Only during that, when they capture one of the machine and it came to them by accident because that German soldier, he could not destroy his uh, submarine and which was captured by the British and they found this Enigma machine 
only then they were otherwise the history our history the whole world history would have been different these are the interesting things there and the turing test was that a machine would be called as intelligent if it can think like a human being and very interesting in education field we have to you know now for your career advancement scheme you have to get some 10 api score the academic performance indicator you have to publish in ugc care list or in scopus list or in web of science list etc etc ah so much of the trouble but you know this is very interesting thing make a google search on this fellow professor philip parker he has he has done a unique thing he has written an algorithm where within 30 minutes his algorithm can write a book of 300 pages and this is a screenshot which i took uh, 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 means uh, there it is of 2012 now in a way next year it will be 10 years old uh, 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 screenshot and on that day he had already had 9 lakh books currently available for sale on amazon you see and he has patented that algorithm so it is not available to you if you are thinking that oh can i can i use that and uh, i'll i also start writing my own books <laughs> you have to approach him but see the, the kind of things which are developing very much and you know uh, uh, this uh, i think that some one of you may be knowing about open ai which is by uh, the company the gpt3 the uh, uh, software developed by open ai which is a company owned by uh, alan musk the richest person on earth at present is the most uh, uh, money among all of us uh, there the company this is a, a very interesting thing which i wanted to show to you uh, and this is uh, taken from twitter where a correspondent wanted to check the power thinking power of this gpt3 and uh, mind you nowadays we have gpt4 an improved version of GPT-3, which is called as Generative pre Transformer, which has millions of uh, parameters into it to think like a human brain and read this conversation. This is wonderful thing. So human being says that, hello, who are you? The machine replies, I'm AI created by open AI. How can I help you today? Are we living in within a simulation? The machine says, yes, absolutely. Who designed this simulation? You designed it. But how can I uh, uh, did it if I'm living uh, uh, within it? So a machine says that, are you trying to ask that who designed you? A person says that, yes. Okay, I will answer you with a joke. Do you know who created this earth? So he says, time, no. Who, aliens, no. God, then the person says that, who or what is God? The machine says that an intelligence that has created the earth again that this is funny person he doesn't want to lose to the machine he says that okay does god exist machine says yes have you seen the god machine says no i have not seen it but then how can you be sure that the god exists so the machine says that that is the best part i can still be sure then the machine the, the human person that if god created me who created you the machine says that open ai so that it that does that mean that open ai is god no then who is open ai for you the machine says that i don't have a creator open ai created me through self learning so now the point is that a software is being created by a software and that is happening in it happened uh, with the google or some other company where they had to shut, shut down one of their project because they don't know that how this Pack, I means that application that code was generated so the machine is generating a code so human person says that okay so it means that you created yourself the machine says that yes i'm product of self evolution so if you are a product of self evolution what about we human beings so the machine says that yes humans are also self evolved beings but where we can localize god in this chain of human self evolving if we self evolved then from where where we should put the god in this chain then the machine says that okay do you know the hierarchy of complexity of intelligent systems okay you tell me then machine says that the hierarchy is the lowest part is atoms from where we make molecules then organisms then humans then artificial intelligence super artificial intelligence and god 
So the person asks that, okay, it's something about God? No, there is no about nothing about God. About God. And then where is God? The machine says, God is everywhere, including the simulation in which we are living. So is there a possibility to contact the God? You know, per person is not trying to lose. The machine says, yes. Then, oh, how? And this is the best part. By merging with creator, you become the God. How can I merge with creator? The last sentence is the best one, sir. By destroying your ego, you can unify with the creator and you can become God. And this is the answer by the machine. You see, <laughs> even like, uh, you, you may be knowing, uh, what is his name? Sadhguru. Sadhguru. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, they, they, they are thinking like that. Okay. This is another interesting thing. A development of AI, Lambda by Google. Uh, so, <clears throat> You, you make a Google search on the applications of uh, Mensa. Uh, it is around five minutes video. It's a wonderful video on the power of Google, the artificial intelligence as a conversation tool. And in here, Sundar Pichai, he demonstrates the power by when the machine talks to a person about the, I think the uh, Pluto and a paper airplane like that. That's a, that's an interesting thing from there. So what the big picture is emerging from here is that the artificial intelligence, that is the human intelligence exited by the machines, it is allowing us for predictions like Amazon purchase or smart email categorization. These are the fundamental activities where in then we lead to the kind of machine learning for the examples are like uh, Google map, which shows you the speed of traffic at a particular location or the Netflix video recommendations or the Facebook facial recognition. When you upload a photograph in which there are uh, more than uh, one uh, two people, then it, it tells you that, okay, do you want to tag it? This person looks like this uh, or something like that it goes into deep learning, which is a technique for implementing the machine learning. And uh, uh, it is being implemented like in self-driving cars or speech recognition or in robotics from there. All these things, they have a great uh, uh, significance. If you want to go into it, then becoming data science, uh, having the knowledge of data science, you should know the scientific methods, knowledge of algorithms, the uh, to how we can extract knowledge or insights from big data. That is very much important. It, it allows you. <clears throat> And its application areas are huge in, in, in expert systems, natural language processing, speech recognition, in computer vision, in robotics, in planning things, etc., etc. There are huge. There is no such areas nowadays which is not covered by these applications, whether it is uh, uh, in, in, in business, in transactions, in, in, in human understanding, in psychology, wherever you see you can find the applications of these things and it can means anything which a everyday human stuff like recognizing objects in images if you show it a photograph of a cat and a dog it should be able to identify yes this is cat and that is dog something like that navigating the map of map transcribing the speech translating between two languages uh, speaking something in medicine, it is helping us in discovering the new drugs, and that's why the uh, the um, yeah, uh, scientists they are able to come up uh, with so many many vaccines for this corona. It was a completely new thing, but then we were successful in developing those things, detecting the gene sequence uh, from there, from insecurity, spotting burglars in there, writing our own encryption detecting the malware, verifying the person's identity, predicting the cold uh, crop yield, uh, what kind of, based on the climatic conditions, whether the crop will be successful or there will be loss of that. Uh, in, in driving, flying a drone, uh, predicting parking area by difficult means uh, in area where it, 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 can, it can show you those things from there. If you want to go into that field, what do you need to learn? You should have the knowledge of say C++ or Java or Python languages uh, uh, there, which is very much needed. And you need to have the skills, which are like for data analyst, for data scientist, data engineer, architect or science uh, business analyst or quality analyst. All these applications, they are very much, uh, uh, you know, uh, valuable uh, to 
acquire in these times there. This is very interesting uh, application of it uh, called as computer vision, which is implemented by many countries as a security measure to identify a suspect a particular person to because it, it can tag it can get and it is implemented on uh, the places where large gathering is there either it is on airports or on railway stations or in malls to, to locate a particular thing to identify someone there and uh, this is another development uh, which is uh, happening about a, a shopping kind of experience four years ago we started to wonder what would shopping look like if you could walk into a store, grab what you want, and just go? What if we could weave the most advanced machine learning, computer vision, and AI into the very fabric of a store so you never have to wait in line? No lines, no checkouts, no registers. Welcome to Amazon Go. Use the Amazon Go app to enter. Then put away your phone, and start shopping. It's really that simple. Take whatever you like. Anything you pick up is automatically added to your virtual cart. If you change your mind about that cupcake, just put it back. Our technology will update your virtual cart automatically. So how does it work? We used computer vision, deep learning algorithms, and sensor fusion much like you'd find in self-driving cars. We call it Just Walk Out Technology. Once you've got everything you want, you can just go. When you leave, our Just Walk Out Technology adds up your virtual cart and charges your Amazon account. Your receipt is sent straight to the app, and you can keep going. Amazon Go. No lie. So this is how. And another important thing, the skill to acquire may be learning certain other tools like uh, Learning R, which is open source tool and independent uh, of any platform. And it is almost used in every industry because it has a very robust visual uh, visualization library. And for it is a good language for statistical and data sciences uh, from there. Now, the applications of AI uh, uh, can be categorized into these uh, layers. The uh, narrow intelligence, which is uh, demonstrated by like IBM Watson or Deep Blue, or the conversation assistants like Alexa is there, Siri is there, Cortana is there, or chatbots, simple kind of things. Then the general intelligence, which is like human intelligence, which has been shown by the computers like Hall 9000, and the super intelligence, like in Wiki, where it exceeds our human intelligence into it. This is one of the uh, uh, very fine example, Professor Ashok Goye, who is Professor of Computer Science at Georgia Tech University uh, um, in the United States. For six months, he developed a software. For six months, for one semester, his class was taught by this. And nobody could imagine that for six months. And he named this uh, tool as Jill Watson. And at the end of the semester, when he introduced them, only then it was revealed that for six months, the, they, the, 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 the students, they were thinking that they are talking to a human teacher. Then only they came to realize that it was a software package. And those of those students, they were highly embarrassed who were, in, uh, who were inviting Jill Watson, thinking that Jill Watson is a, uh, you know, um, <laughs> their lady teacher. So asking her to join them for coffee or going out on a date and the software captured everything so that they, they were highly embarrassed by things but see the power of the these kind of applications professor ashok Gwen, make a google search you will find interesting uh, 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 stories about it then there are other applications which are highly being used maybe you all know about grammarly which is ai powered writing assistant it tells you that how you can improve your writing style then this is immediately you can do it right now along with me when i just take out your mobile phone if you are connected uh, with me in this session using your laptop then you can do it very easily take out your phone open its browser and just go to this website uh, quickdraw.withgoogle.com uh, 
and you uh, try to draw any image using your finger on the um, mobile screen and then the software will try to identify it what object you have uh, uh, drawn quick draw with google that is how you train the machine you train the software package that how to identify and then what it does any image which you create it adds to it database so at the end after six tries it will tell you that what other people they thought about it and what others they drew about it so it will ask you draw a cycle or aeroplane or something and and then this this is very funny uh, tell it to your kids if you have kids at home they will definitely going to like this application it is wonderful then the other applications are this is a digital assistant at the durham university this is university of british columbia where they have developed a language uh, uh, learning application using virtual reality in which you visit a store and you talk to the assistant there and then develop your language uh, skills because you have to go somewhere you have to talk to someone you ident you want some help and uh, something uh, from there this is another uh, 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 at penn state university the Nang natural language processing lab here this software allows the students to analyze the assignments of the students so it does the content analysis of the students assignments so that the teachers can make an uh, understanding whether the students they have understood the text or the curriculum or not now that, that's a wonderful thing and this is socrates which is a digital assistant for the for their learning management system the blackboard is a one of the learning management system you must have heard the name of moodle uh, edmodo schoology google classroom uh, similarly blackboard which is a proprietary software one of the uh, wonderful very powerful learning management systems so what we need to do is that professor mm pan says that uh, we need to work on uh, like uh, uh, promoting mobile learning because everybody is having a mobile phone. Uh, we, 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 we should be uh, taking care of uh, uh, like AI supported help desks, lifelong learning self communities uh, needs to be developed. Then there are variables for self learning like AR VR uh, there and blockchain and badges for the credentials or something or AI powered learning apps like iMath is there, Duolingo is there with the help of which Duolingo is a very good app. You can install it on your phones and you can learn another language. Uh, from the, it has a long list more than 200 languages are there in the database. So what is the future of education? Elon Musk says that modern education is wrong. Professor Sugata Mitra, you see him in the photograph on the left, long back, and he is the first recipient of 1 million US dollars as the tag to uh, 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 during his uh, TED talk, where he is trying to develop the uh, uh, school in the cloud. He's in, uh, he's in the United uh, Kingdom now as professor of education technology and developing, uh, uh, creating a good work over there. Long back, he created this philosophy by as a soul, S-O-L-E, self-organized learning environment in which in a slum area in New Delhi, he put a computer and that's all. No teacher, nobody to explain it. And uh, the, the students went there and it was surprising to know that the students, they over a period of time, they were able to understand how to use machine, how to use mouse, how to open an application and something like that. That is called as the self-organized learning. So the future is already here. It is just the issue is that it is not evenly distributed. So thank you so much for listening to me. And I'm stopping my uh, presentation now. Over to you, Dr. Shekhar. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Your uh, session was very highly informative and uh, very useful to the teachers. You touched all the technological advancement like artificial intelligence, blockchain, virtual reality, natural language processing, and all the reason happening. And uh, you also uh, gave a vision of what is going to be the future in learning and future in teaching. So. Uh, very thankful to you, sir, for a very wonderful and informative presentation. I must thank you uh, because uh, in a short span of time, I tried uh, Dr. Yashwal Sarma. He was unable to attend uh, this session and then he 
referred you and uh, without any hesitation you accepted in the first instant itself mm -hmm. i must thank on behalf of burgappa uh, polytechnic and the uh, department of mechanical engineering and uh, on behalf of all the participants of uh, this uh, program i must thank sir yes sir <laughs> yes thank you mr sir can we take up uh, if any questions because uh, if any questions yeah. from the participant can we take up sir sure sure certainly oh, thank you sir thank you so uh, participants if you have any query you can unmute your mic and uh, you can post the question to the expert if, uh, if there is no question we, could, uh, we can go for the next session if anything we will wait for a few seconds you can unmute your mic and you can uh, post the question to the expert okay maybe they are ready to attend the next session yes okay friends all the best to you okay. have a thank successful you, workshop thank you, Mister. thank you for our accepting our invitation and uh, the very wonderful uh, keynote address sir thank, thank you, you. Mister. you you are very welcome okay thank, namaste everyone thank.